Okay, so I just wanted to have a, a larger view of the spectrum display right here. Um, it is possible to you when you have the hand icon up. It is possible to move the entire display around inside the the uh, the frame. But the other thing that I wanted to mention is the the little tracking ball right here. Is that instead of trying to read everything off of your displays, uh, gra the graph, um, the axes, you can look up here and see what you've got. We've got, we're sitting at 10 kilohertz right now. This is, this is the exact number of the frequency right here. And this is, this is the phase right up in here. So I'm on tracer channel B, which is blue, and that's I'm reading in, in fraction of a degree there. If I hit the tab button, then I can come back to, to the channel A trace, which is actually my resistance value or my impedance value in this uh, particular instance. And we can see that, it, that my 1,000 ohm resistor is 1,012 ohms right there at that frequency. Okay, next what we're doing now is we're going to uh, look at some aluminum electrolytic capacitors and we're going to demonstrate how you can uh, use the persistence mode on the spectrum display to build up a family of curves. And, uh, to, but to begin with, what we have here is we have in the center, we've got the, the spectrum display and we have basically f five sweeps of the same capacitor. I wanted to show um, how uh, repeatable the results are with this system right here. Right now the red trace is the capacitance. Uh, we've got frequency on the bottom on the x-axis, uh, 10 hertz up to 10 kilohertz. The blue trace down here is um, the dissipation factor, the lossiness of the cap. So, you know, it's a filter cap, so we're interested in how it's, it's performing in the low frequency areas. Um, the, the way that you build up a number of different curves um, and use the persistence function is that you use these two uh, buttons up in here that say channel A and channel B. And you just pull these down here, and then it says add reference. And so then when, after you're done with a trace, you click on Add Reference for both the traces that you want to put on there. And then you can use this, this um, window here to select the different traces. And when we get through it, uh, actually doing the thing, we'll be able to click through this and actually see different ones. You can see a little difference over here on, as the curve goes up. But, over in here, all the, all the traces are pretty much right on top of each other. I can click through them right here and you can see some of them start to highlight, but they're all so close together that you really can't see it. Okay, so now we're actually going to uh, build up a family of curves and we're going to start with electrolytic capacitor number one. Um, they're all the same value, they're all the same pretty much identical components, so we're just going to see how the, how the, the, the uh, performance of them varies. Um, between each other. So when we're working with electrolytic capacitors, you want to, um, you know, set up your signal generator ac accordingly. And one of the things you need to do is put a little bit of a bias voltage on the, on the capacitor. So uh, for this application, a, a half a volt will work. You can see up here I've got 0 0.5. So that'll work. Um, we're using circuit A, like I like we did before. And for the first sweep, what we're going to do is click the auto setup button. Okay, so the, 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 the system will automatically set up itself. It's going to look a little strange while it's scanning, but then it'll, it'll resize the, the two traces uh, appropriately. And then on subsequent sweeps, we're going to uncheck the auto setup and you'll see that, that they'll just all fall in together as we go. So I'm going to click start sweep now and we'll just watch the whole thing work. Here it goes. Keep your eye also on the scope display because you can see the excitation and the response from, from this whole thing. And so now it's, uh, it's sweeping across from 10 hertz to 10 kilohertz. We can see as the graph builds up, it goes along. And then when it gets all done, I'll show you what we do next. 
And you can see how it's progressing in this area right here. It says it's sweeping and then it waits and then it's sweeping. When it's done, it'll tell you it's done. And then there you go. So that it, it auto size. So then the first thing we're gonna do is gonna remember to, to click off auto setup up there. Okay, so here, um, what I'm gonna do here is just click this, which is, is a normalizing the, the, uh, the scales to the graph. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this by first clicking Add Reference here and then Add Reference there. Okay, so now we've, we've basically saved these two. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to try to label each one of these traces and then we're going to come back and, and scan all the rest of them. All right, so stand by and we'll be back in a minute.